Hi, my name is Patrick Wong. The guys at CXC asked me to come in and give you guys a lap around the Rolex 24 race circuit at Daytona International Speedway. We're currently driving the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car on iRacing. Let's go take a lap. Exiting the pits, we talk about it every single year. Someone goes too quick during the race on cold tires and pancakes the side of the car. There's a white wall here as you see as I approach. Three in the morning with no tire pressure, no tire warmers, it's treacherous. So you're really feeding in the power slowly. This layout is six infield corners with the NASCAR banking. It's about four miles. As you enter the racetrack, you're always leaving one lane inside turn three because the car is approaching behind you or at speed. They've got heat in their tires and they want around you as soon as they can. Approaching turn four, we call it the kink. It's the one place where we dial aerodynamic grip into the car. A breathe out of the throttle and back to full throttle on the exit. Late hard braking, mid track, letting faster traffic drivers left for turn five. Second gear, squeezing the throttle, opening your hands, hustling the car back over to the right for turn six. A very late and hard break. An early turn and catch a little bit of the inside left curb and then open the hands as you build onto the apron and up onto the banking. Up onto the high banks, the first time you run at Daytona, it really hits you, 31 degrees of banking. It seems like you're gonna be upside down after a few seconds, but after a few laps, your body and your sight adjust to it. You learn where to look and it feels just like a flat straightaway. Back straightaway at Daytona down into the bus stop. I think there's the most lap time defined here. It's a third or a fourth gear corner. As you can see, if you carry a little bit too much speed, you'll pick up some understeer. The key is exit speed here and running all the way out to the wall. In a GT car, you always leave at least one lane to the right, but as you see, once I get down into NASCAR turns three and four, I'm running mostly down towards the bottom because it's easy flat even on the outlap. But rule of thumb is to always leave one lane high for faster prototypes in the GT class. Entering the tri-oval start finish line at Daytona, first time the lap. Hardest braking section at Daytona turns one and two as you approach down into the infield. Turn two, little bit of adjustment on your exit, fighting traction up to third gear and fourth gear, hustling the car back over to the left for braking for turn three. It's a hard brake. As the speed bleeds off, you lose front grip, so you bleed off the brake. Grab the throttle early, use all the road on your exit, and then again, hustling back over for a left-hander. Flat out on turn and breathe out of the throttle, back to full throttle on exit. Entering turn five, it's a right-hander. You start tight, you let the car open up right before you peak at apex. Looking for the exit curve, you know when you can go to full throttle based on when you spot the exit. Back over to the right for turn six, it's a left-hander. The bottom of second gear, the tightest corner on the track. You're bleeding your throttle pedal on to get to full throttle as you go up the apron and back onto NASCAR. Two and three. Right about the 200 marker, you start lifting off, braking about 175. Fourth gear, picking up this curve on the right and then the curve on the left. It's really a straightforward connecting the dots. You're maximizing all of the road that's available to you in the bus stop. I would say that's the most technical section of one lap at Daytona.